Good morning. This is Jay for the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. I'm going to do a little river muddler here. Uh, all our materials will be available in the links below and we'd love to see you come into the shop too. Okay, here I'm, I have gotten to where I'm starting so many of my flies with a good solid base of thread and a little bit of Loctite. Now this, I may be overdoing it a little bit, but durability is great. So this muddler, some, sometimes they have a, uh, they could have a, a tinsel body, they could have a chenille body, they could have a flat braid body. I'm liking this with a dub body. This is a blend of uh, my friend Greg Senyo's, uh, I think it's emerald. Uh, Fusion Dub plus a little bit of uh, Whitlock's SLF Olive. I probably got a little bit of orange in there too. A little bit of Eda Peach. Not critical, but it comes out kind of olive. I, I spun it in a loop. So what I'm going to do is add a collar here and you have a lot of choices as to your colors. I chose this as something I might I might fish this, uh, oh, any place. Uh, North Umpqua, Deschutes, uh, Klamath, uh, Nusdaka, Silets for summer fish. Uh, this is an EP Invader brush. It's the two and a half inch. Uh, it's very sparse. I use exactly one turn of this material. Uh, we've got some natural hair in this brush as well as some synthetic. Um, you will find, sometimes I use the 4 inch brush uh, and trim a little bit off the ends. This is the 2 and a half. I'm going to put on, uh, you could call it a wing or opercle or um, uh, pectoral fins. It's only going to be on the top of the muddler. I have trimmed it and I am gonna, I'm going to spin my thread and I'm going to tie it in right close to the end of those butts, holding it very firmly, loose. Now it goes tight. Um, and then I cinch down hard. Now I've only got two turns of thread there. Uh, that may be sufficient. Uh, I'm spreading that material a little bit around the top of the hook. And now I'm for security. I'm going to put a couple more tight turns in there. And you see how little bulk I have out there? Little dab of cement on the bottom. And you see I have no, no none of that material on the bottom. So this is a block of deer hair without the tips. And oh, there again I'm spinning my thread. And many people like to spin this deer hair. That's great. I am not as consistent at spinning in this part of the fly as I am with stacking. So this, uh, this hair is kind of stacked on top. Now you, I'm pulling hard on that. I'm really cinching down and I was even holding on to my hook to make sure that nothing bends or slips. I've turned my fly over and yes in fact there is kind of a sparse area underneath the fly because I stacked instead of spun my deer. So I'm putting another block in there and I'm trying to work my thread I'm trying to work my thread uh, through the hair and that's just one turn there. Got a good even coverage at one turn and then I'm going to work that thread through the top because I don't want to mat a lot of hair down. Now before I move my thread forward, I'm going to use a hair packer. Hair pa yeah, it's a, it's a packer, not a stacker. I'm holding my hook, holding the back part because I'm going to push very firmly. Try to slide that back. And then let's see, ha have I got enough coverage? Yeah, I actually had enough coverage with the stack on top, big stack on top, small stack on the bottom to cover, uh, to make the head 
of the mower. Sometimes you have to add uh, extra hair. A little bit of cement there. And, and things are so tight. I, I normally like to use a whip finish, but I'm, I'm going to put uh, several half hitches in here. And each time, you, you, don't, you don't just do a light little pull. You see how hard I'm pulling on that. And I'll do six or seven uh, half hitches. Probably don't need them all, but I like them. Here I'm using my dubbing teaser to just uh, make sure I don't have any trap fibers. And now the whole issue of how do you shape that head? Do you use straight scissors? Do you curve scissors? Do you use a razor blade? I use both. Well, I use all three. For a rounded head, I really like to use curved scissors to get things started and then I will use uh, my razor blade. This is a, a, a double-edged razor blade, nice and sharp. Uh, many people like to hold it by hand. I like it in the, I like it in this nice little tool. Um, uh, I think this is a stone foe, but uh, there's, you know, there's some good razor blade holders out there. Now this muddler, I gave it kind of a flat bottom and a rounded top. There you have it. Uh, so I hope you had fun with this and I look forward to seeing you on the river, in the shop, and at the fly tying bench. Have a great day.